Nowadays, it's common to see 12 megapixel smartphones. Huawei put 40 of them in their P20 Pro and that's a lot. Now Sony, they just had to go higher. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. So how high did Sony actually go? Well, with their new IMX586 sensor, they went all the way to 48. You heard that right, 48 megapixels. That's 8,000 by 6,000 pixels, which Sony says is the highest pixel count in the industry. Now, of course, with any huge megapixel count cameras, there is a catch. At this level on a smartphone, the sensor pixel become extremely small, in this case, 0.8 micron. With pixels this size, it's easy for the sensor to get confused and to start picking up a lot of noise in low light situations. But Sony plans on using a quad Bayer color filter array, which basically uses four adjacent pixels to average the color signal. This will result in a 12 megapixel photo, but it's still not bad considering that this feature will likely only be used when necessary. Since Sony is the biggest camera manufacturer in the smartphone game right now, I think it's safe to say that we will probably see this in the phones next year or maybe the year after that. They plan to start shipping samples this September for the price of $27 each. So what are your thoughts on high pixel counts? I mean, sure, it's cool to be able to crop a picture to infinity, but wouldn't you prefer to have a larger sensor on your phone rather than more pixels? Let me know down below. I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Speaking of smartphones, in the last week or so, Samsung has been going hard on their YouTube channel to advertise the Galaxy S9. They're pumping up ads against Apple with their ingenious campaign. And I've gotta say, it's kind of hit and miss for me. If Apple was doing the same, the ads would probably be a lot better. And I mean, I'm comparing that to the Mac versus PC campaign. I mean, I still loved PC, but Apple knew how to hit where it hurt. Their first ad Samsung did was on the download speeds of the phones. I mean, does it really matter when it's mostly dependent on your service provider? Anyways, I'll leave some links to the videos down below if you wanna watch them. Some are funnier than others. So take a look and let me know which one you prefer. And now let's jump into in case you didn't know. Nintendo is taking down some emulator websites. Now they didn't actually take them down, but some legal actions against two big ROM hosting websites was enough for those to stop their activity completely. It makes sense though. Those websites were living on the edge and it was going to happen at some point. Love Retro and LoveRoms.com both removed all of their ROMs on their website, but Love Retro completely shut down as you can see here. Then we have Google, which launched a pretty weird AI experiment called Move Mirror, and you can try it out today if you want to. So this AI will use your webcam to track your movements in real time and find photos online of people with the same pose. It's a little weird, and when I tried it, it seemed to find the same photo over and over again, but give it a try, it might be fun. In gaming, the 2024 Olympic Games, which are happening in Paris, might include a competitive gaming tournament. The IOC, or International Olympics Committee, met for an esports forum last week to discuss the possibility. I mean, it would be great for esports to be a part of it, but with so many different games in the competitive arena, is it really feasible? Also, personally, I like how esports are right now. It's already huge, and I don't think that it needs the Olympics to grow even larger. What are your thoughts? Let me know down below. Then we have Rainbow Six Siege, which seemed to have a game-breaking bug on PC and Xbox One that unexpectedly crashes you back to the desktop or your Xbox home screen. Now there is scheduled maintenance happening today for PC and tomorrow for consoles, so let's hope that they fix that and quickly, please. All right, now you guys have been asking a lot of questions, so let's talk about the giveaway. The winners have been announced yesterday on the Hardware Canucks Twitter, and we finally had some responses. Sorry about the delay for the announcement. We had two winners who didn't answer, so congratulations to you two. Enjoy your cards. You officially have a better GPU than me. That's pretty sad. Now to answer a question from you guys, what is the intro music? 
Well, I made it on a program called Reason. The melody on the guitar is from a super old rap song, but I don't remember the name of the artist, unfortunately. I just remembered the riff and played it out on the guitar. And that's pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you can. And you can click right here to see the latest video. It'd be greatly appreciated. And right here to subscribe to the channel. Oh, it's not moving though. It's just, it's static. It's right here. So do this, do that, and I'll see you on the next video. Stay frosty. I'll say it again. Stay frosty. Bye.